This, this has turned into a fucking major one. This was only supposed to be a batch of <laughs> quick refurb. And so oh, it was never a quick refurb. Okay, camera rolling. Uh, welcome back to the Tej Talks YouTube channel. I'm here with a very familiar face, Mr. James Sahota, uh, in front of your property, right? Your flip. That's it. The latest one, York Road, the London flip. And uh, you know what, we didn't actually do a video at your last HMO project, but that's probably the last project that we have some sort of content for where we showed people around and we did a site day and all that stuff, That's right, right. yeah. So, yep, yep. as you know, on my YouTube channel, I do tours with people of their properties, and this is an hour away from me, so I made the exception for James, you know, a bit too far, petrol crisis and all that, <laughs> well, petrol gate. I'm surprised your but, car got here. Well, <laughs> But I am here, and we're going to take you inside this £400,000 purchase? £420,000 purchase, yeah. £420,000 purchase, where the house opposite, and when I say opposite, I mean directly Literally behind there. you, sold for how much? 533 free in the auction a month later. And it's same sort of quality inside? I would say so, yeah, same spec, it's and a it's probate sale. same sale. kind of size, if not slightly smaller? Yeah, yeah. So, talk about locking in profit from day one. So, come with us inside. So we're now inside the house. James, timber door, are you keeping this? I am actually going to keep that, yeah. I think I might reglaze it, just paint it. It's a secondary door. It doesn't really make much of a difference, so I think it's going to stay. And actually, oh, there is a UPVC door there with the kind of wood effect frames. Mm. Um, wood effect frames, what are you doing with those? Keeping them or...? Actually, they're very, very good windows. We were looking at having them changed, but the fact that when the window guy came around and looked at them and said they were actually really, really good, you can tell he me has good. suggested that we keep them. And in my kind of way of trying to get it more modernized, I've got a company coming in next week who are spraying them. So they're being sprayed anthracite silver or anthracite gray, uh, which is the kind of in color, both inside and out. Uh, and they come with a 10 year guarantee. And I've used this firm before. Wow. So they will guarantee for 10 years that the paint will not peel from there, which is probably better than a fencer guarantee, to be fair. So, yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. And then we walk into the hallway here and you're structurally, you're keeping this wall here, you're keeping it open. Yeah. Obviously, what, what lights are you doing? Spotlights in the entrance? Or no, no, I'm just going to do one nice feature like that sits here. It's not a large area to cover, so something will go here that can be directionally pointed. Um, I didn't want to mess around with spots too much in this area here. Yeah. It's a nice big open walkway though, for given where it's sort of in London. I think this is quite a nice little space, yeah. little, little you know, plant pot there. Um, all sockets are being chased, as you can see. Yeah. Already kind of in progress with the socket box. Um, and what colour sockets, white or chrome? I'm just going for whites, straight whites, really nice thin square white ones. Oh, sorry, rounded whites throughout here. Uh, if there's any chrome, the chrome are going to go just in the kitchen. Ah, what Ooh. is this guy doing? Why did you want to turn the spot? In hell. <laughs> so now, James, where are we in oh, the main? We're, yeah, we're in the main, lounge? the main living room. So this area was split before there was a wall there. We've temporarily taken the wall out, but it is going back in because it was only like a half odd wall. So the plan here is, this is going to become the living area. Um, the TV will go on there. Now, one thing I always do is I always plan the room with the furniture first. So I won't just create the room and then think about the furniture after. We always place the furniture where it needs to go and then design the room around that accordingly. Chimney had to come out here. Really odd. The chimneys upstairs were already taken out, but the ones downstairs were still here. Strange. Mm. So the chimneys come out there. Um, over here, we're going to put the wall back in there where we took it out originally. Over here, the wall's going to go back in there. And then this area of the house, when you walk into the living room, is going to become like a little office study type area with some bookshelves. A little desk will go in there. This will become like a quiet sitting room with a TV family room will be over here. Um, and then obviously when we, when we do move over to that side, you'll see the main extension going on, which is adding to the space. And this structural beam? Uh, I presume so. Yeah, it, it looks so, like, it, yeah. it it's, uh, it's holding up the, all yeah, the middle well, of the joists you know, yeah. Look at it, it's an, old, uh, it's an old wooden one as well. It is, and look at timber, it does its job. And I think something you have to be careful of is if your builder comes and says, oh, we'll just knock it off, we'll take the wall out. Yeah. You know, now your ceilings are exposed, you can actually see that both joists cross and meet here which means this is a point of support. Otherwise, you'd have to have joists running. The, it would just, and obviously, clearly, this has to be a point of support in the house. So just be careful when you're knocking things through, yeah. structural engineer or common bloody sense. Yeah, or even your demolition team, because I had a demolition team in here that come in. Now, one thing you've got to remember about demolition teams is they like to demolish stuff. They break so stuff. They, yeah, they Pop exactly smash. like to break stuff. Everything. As you can see, I don't know if you want to pan around here, we can show you here as they took out a, a piece of wood, a wooden frame that was holding up that wall, 
So that kind of wall there is just floating at the moment. So, you know, if you stand under there long enough, I'm sure it's going to fall on someone's head. <laughs> but I think it is. Just goes to show how old houses were, were made. But demolition guys, yeah, you need to supervise them. You want to be watching over them 100%. And this is interesting because this is kind of the floorboard upstairs and it's the flat roof at the front, which adds a bit of extra space. And I like it. Yeah, it's, kind it's of nice. I mean, once that. it's boarded up, I might actually get the electrician to maybe chuck some lights in there on a separate on a separate kind of switch. I would. And uh, James, all around us, I can see insulation, I can see plasterboards, I got a lot of plaster. How are you finding materials right now with the COVID crisis and all that I stuff? I think the guys, you know what, on this particular one, I have subbed the trades. I'm managing the trades, I've got trades coming in. Individually? Individually. Good luck to James. Yeah, no, good luck to me, but you know what, it's been quite smooth sailing at the moment. But one thing I've done this time is I've asked them to organise their materials because I'm yeah. sorry, with the COVID crisis going on right now, I just yeah, want no. one fixed price. And if it's within my budget, you deal with the materials because I haven't got time to be going out here trying to save two quid here, three quid here because the it. job's not big enough. Just deal with it, right? Yeah. So if we swing around here, James. So James, what, what are we walking into now? Because I noticed there's what would have been a kitchen over here. Yeah, so this was quite an odd space before. They had kitchen units there, just like a few floating. And then they just had a very basic kitchen there um yeah it's just it wasn't suitable for a family you know obviously this house is going to appeal to a, maybe a family that's got two kids possibly even three kids or a start a home for someone and i find that the kitchen has to be the most special place in the house especially in a family home so one of the things we've done under permitted development is go out that way we're going out three meters that way the house did have a dodgy old lean to which was literally leaning to and falling over so we've had to take that down and uh building a new extension going out. Obviously you can hear loads of noise here. There's uh, tradespeople working as we speak. Protecting the soft hair from the yeah. <laughs> And uh, James, it's, it's good to see that these timbers, I mean, I'm used to buying much older houses where the timbers are wrecked, but these are yeah. all absolutely solid. Yeah. You know, there's, yeah. there's like no issues here. A few bit of padding, but you know, there's real, <laughs> I won't fall down, but there's no issues here. And even above the windows, it looks like you've got a lintel in there. Yeah, the lintel's in there. Yeah, and that's actually, in, in, in fact, that's actually coming out. Oh, oh, that is going to be coming all... out because we're opening this space out. Now, just something to point out to people, if, if I can show you around here, I was originally going to take the whole of this wall out. Now, taking the whole of this wall out would have meant a picture frame still, which would have been five still. So one, sorry, four. One, two, two, three, and four, one in the ground. So I decided just by keeping this bit in here, keeping this bit in here and taking that out and taking that out, we're slicing this down, I get away with just putting one steel in. Which saves cost, time, yeah. labor, structural calculator, everything. It yeah. saves everything, Massive right? amounts. Just by keeping, you know, like a 500 a pillar there. A bit of structural, there. yeah, support, of course. So we've just brought that into the design of the house to make it look, you know, it's a little bit, we've factored it into the kitchen, the way the you kitchen's going to You can do something look. nice with it. I think we yeah. saw the CGIs. I'll put them up on screen now so you can see them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's have a look at the outside space and look at the extension. So James, we're now outside in what was before, was it like a just a paved area? Kind this of a was deck? The, the old lean-to. It went from here to approximately there. Ah, oh, you can kind of see the... And it had like it a was. really dodgy old glass roof that just kind of came off of here. The roof was broken. The lean-to, I think, is pointless. You know, you had the drains in here. You had the, the waste pipe going through here. The, you know, the main water drain was in the actual lean-to, so... So you're going to continue from, you know, you said it would be 5.5 meters, whatever you were saying? Yeah, okay. Re just restart. So this, ex this extension will be f about 5.4 meters and it will come out three meters. It will be done under permitted development. A certificate of kind of lawful development will go in after it's done. Uh, I've already spoken to the council. They're pretty happy with that. Neighbors both got them anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. I did want to, I did want to go out extra you know I was trying to go out to four meters but all it takes is for one of the neighbors to say no and I'm in a bit of a shit show so and to I thought your garden is not huge it's, I not, would, it's, it's not. a balance isn't it yeah. between yes yeah. you want living space but you kind of also want a nice outdoor space in London where I know there's parks and stuff yeah. but it's still the city or the town mm. uh, so that makes a lot of sense and and do, you know, do you know what the garden's actually even smaller due to our favorite auctioneers I won't mention their no, names because they're not getting a plug on this channel yeah. um, <laughs> They decided that the rear garage that actually belonged to this house previously, it'd be fun just to kind of sell that off at auction as a separate lot. So they went ahead and did that. But what that's meant for me is that I've had to go on and put a fence across there now to kind of separate that off. But to be fair, 
The garage sold for what, £10,000? Isn't a lot of money. It's got huge development potential, James. You could build a... <laughs> oh yeah, because everybody else has built a tower block in the back there, right? Huge, huge. It's got about as much development as uh, my did getting bigger in the next hour or something, you know? Forget that. Anyway, um, so we just fenced it off. Pointless having that because you can hardly get a car around the back of it. It would just become a storage ground Shed, for yeah. all your crap, you know? So fenced it up. Just going to have a lovely little garden. Um, nice bifolds that actually open out completely onto the garden, so the whole house, the space continues right Inside, away from outside living. Yeah. Controlled. So if you've got a couple of kiddies, they can be running around in the garden. You can be sitting there on the sofa having an afternoon nap. And James, so keep an eye on them at the same time. Tech talk. Uh, the yeah. trenches. How wide? Six hundred. How deep? At the moment, I think they're about one meter or one point one. Right now, you've got some shuttering in there. What's the purpose of that? Uh, the purpose of the shuttering is to stop uh, the soil that's there from collapsing into the trench that's already been dug. Obviously, it's an exposed hole and land wants to slide and, you know, the mud would probably want to slide in, hence the reason why we're just holding it back. And it's raining, of course, which can just help just, you know. And James, there's water in the trench and if you do get more water in the trench, what do they do? We just pump it out. Every morning, the guys have got a pump here. They place the pump there and it pumps the water out into the garden. I wonder why it was wet there. <laughs> and in terms of getting concrete in here, there's a house, there's a house in the way of the street how is the concrete getting into here? So you'll have the uh, concrete truck arrive tomorrow. It'll also come with an additional small truck which carries the pump or houses the pump. They'll connect up the pipes at the front. The pipes will come here and the concrete will just be pumped straight into the trenches. It's so satisfying watching concrete be poured, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's like mm -hmm. therapeutic. So uh, I think this is pretty much it for the outside. Obviously, as this grows and as we're you know, going to show people on the flip course, you'll see it go from this to then putting the lintel in, which actually is a special kind of feature, which doesn't always happen. Um, at a kind of floor level, putting the DPC in, the first set of bricks, and then basically building it all the way up with a you know, fairly confined space either side. So stay tuned for an update video, um, or more than likely join us on the flip course. So let's go inside and let's see the upstairs. Yeah. So what room is this? This will be the smallest room of the house, which is sometimes in London called the box room, the study, the half room, the kids room. You get a single in here, I reckon. You do get a single in here. Again, the importance of planning your room with furniture. All of these rooms have been planned with furniture. Single bed will go there, hence the reason why there is a plug there. You know, we live in a society where everybody must sleep with their mobile phone now. Yeah, everything. If, even if they don't sleep with their significant other, the phone <laughs> must be there. So there's a charger to make sure that doesn't die. Um, potentially, if this is an office, somebody might want to have a, you know, a, a kind of TV there, or you might want to have computer, all that kind of stuff. So yeah. you've got the Cat Cat Five cables there. Thinking about connections now. Look, as we're rewiring this room, I just thought for the sake of a few hundred quid more, get it Cat Five ready for somebody who moves in, so it is kind of future proof. And these are the small things that you wouldn't maybe necessarily do on a normal buy to let in a cheaper area, but on a flip of this level, you're putting in those little things, right? So the yeah. agent can say, look. High speed, but even higher speed. Yeah, right here. Yeah, because look, we've got we've got smart TVs. Everybody's got a smart TV now. Um, even Ted has a smart TV. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it just simply plugs into the cat vibe, and you're away with the connection. You're not messing around with aerials on the roof anymore. So I just wanted to make sure I do it with all of my projects, regardless. Cat Cat Five or Cat Six is a must in every room. But yeah, you're right. This is the smallest room of the house. It did have a stupid built-in wardrobe. Who puts a built-in wardrobe in a room like this? Um, personally, I think it'd be a really nice office, especially with this nice bay window mm. that looks out onto the, onto the really road. Nice um, so yeah, yeah. Cool. James, we are in the principal we, bedroom. Yeah, we're the in biggest the biggest bedroom. Um, and I love that you're stepping on that old insulation full of dust, really helpful for everyone here. Um, and, and on that note, people, when you are you know, stripping stuff or when you're working here, we're not working here, we're doing a video, Wear a mask, wear goggles, because there's dust. Give it 50 years, it'll, you can hear, man. It will be a, it will be a problem. And also, um, on, the, on, the, on the note of dust, just to let you guys know that, look, when we were taking the ceilings down here, we should have let the neighbours know. The windows were open. The neighbours' windows were open. Loads of black dust into their house. Windows ruined. Curtains ruined. Front rooms ruined. So, yeah, bear that in mind when you're doing that. Uh, the demolition guy should have actually just been squirting with water to make sure it was all kind of going down rather than going out. And you'd assume that people would do this automatically, but don't ever do that with, you know, uh, trades. not going to happen. So yeah, just be careful with that. And James, quite a nice big bedroom looking over at your favorite tree. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leave the tree out. <laughs> <laughs> with, you know, quite a, I mean, one, two, three, four, five panes of glass. Yeah. I like it. I like it. It's, it's, it's a nice, 
least sized room for where we are in London, I suppose. And man, yeah. if the chimney brush was in here. Yeah, yeah, it, it would have been would, awfully be small. And you know, like you said before on the video, you just don't get this size of room anymore in London, you know. If this was a new big house, this would have been a very, very small room indeed. So, um, you know, it's, it's nice that you've still got the size here in Chingford. And there's a crack here between us. I mean, I'm, I'm not overly fussed. It looks like some pressure from this supporting beam has just caused a bit of a crack, but when you take it off, you'll see what's behind it, people. But don't be put off by that. I guarantee you James only saw that just now. So don't worry, it's not important enough that you need to notice yeah, it, but yeah. it can help you kind of negotiate money off deals. So James, uh, if we look up, they are boarding. I mean, this is how long, is, how long since the refurb started in here? So it's actually only been one week and two days since... And you've already got, got boards on the freaking ceiling. Yeah, we've pulled off the old ceilings. We were going to overboard, <laughs> but the boards are kind of going like this. So we thought we don't really want to take a risk. And it was actually the builder's idea. He said, look, I suggest they come off and we overboard straight onto the beam. So we've got a nice straight surface when we're plastering. He goes, last thing you want is we plaster because of the bulges underneath, you don't get a nice look. And you know, you're defeating the object of skimming a whole room mm. if you've got lumps and bumps. I think also, because this is a newer house, if this was a 200 year old cottage, you know, I find that actually having a not having it super straight looks and feels weird, but mm. in this house it wouldn't. But if it was an old cottage, you know, having that actually get away kind of with fits it. in mm. with what it should look like. So let's go to the next room, shall we? Yeah, sure. Plasterboard. Certainly is 12.5 mil. I remember when this stuff and plaster was a madness. Do you remember? Yeah. During during lockdown, and of course, like we said earlier, materials are not a huge huge problem um, thus far. So James, this is a Second bedroom. I mean, this yeah. feels bigger than the other ones. Or I it... think it's probably a tad smaller. Mm. A tad smaller. It probably feels smaller because the window is lower down, so you're not getting as much light in. Yeah, 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 yeah um, that's true. That could be one of the reasons. In fact, this window is actually coming out. As oh. nice as it is, I want all the windows to match, so I want so the backs to be the yeah, same yeah. as the front. So. And again, in a rental, I don't know if we'd necessarily do that, but because it's a flip, yeah. It's, it's, there's no sort of like cost efficiency. It's more like, well, are we going to get bang for buck out of it? And you know, you're going to have to, someone will notice that. Aesthetically, when you take pictures of the back of the house and you've got a lovely anthracite aluminum bifold door With and this. it's been perfectly rendered and then you've got this brown monstrosity still here, it just doesn't work. It needs to be all matching, I feel. It does, it does. Aesthetically a pleasing. I thought you were the brown monstrosity. Um, <laughs> and James, if you see, when we look up here, obviously, you know, there's gaps in between here, which are, I mean, interesting. I'm not sure what they're going to do there. I think they're just going to tape that up, if I'm honest with you. Obviously, this needs a bit of filling. But yeah, yeah, this probably isn't, you know, the way the house has been built, these walls, I wouldn't even imagine if it's, you know, it's probably not even square. Nah, but it, it works. It's strong. I mean, again, you've got another crack over here. Yeah. Which, which is interesting, looking at the bricks underneath, but it's not big enough, I don't think, to concern, but it's worth, it's still worth understanding, you know, what causes things like that. Um, especially on a viewing because that's your negotiation power. Yeah, You know, if you course. need to do something there. And the, there was a chimney breast in this room, wasn't there? Yeah, but they took it out. This is the odd thing, I don't understand. They took all the chimneys out apart from the one room on that side. And they've also done, they've even put a nice border around <laughs> the floorboard as well. <laughs> used, yeah. Like very short, probably not but very stable. it's not actually tied. Yeah, the whole floor's dipping it's on not that tied side. into the wall. Way. Yeah, definitely not tied into the wall. Look at that. So that will, you know, once they do the bits at the bottom, they're going to yeah, put a yeah. piece of tin. And you're, are you boarding or oh, um, over skimming all these walls? No, just over skimming them. They're I mean, just. You don't need to reboard them really. I mean, they're, you know, once you strip them back and once they put the blue grit on them. I did. In fact, in my HMO, the walls were probably like this, but I overboarded them all. You went overboard, literally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I did go you overboard know, with that In a flip, one. though, I think we'd definitely choose to overboard, to, to board. Like, it wouldn't necessarily be a hesitation if we needed to. Yeah. Whereas in a rental, I think we're more like, well, look, we can skim it, we can skim it. Yeah. A board is always a better finish, but you have to look at the end values, right? Mm. And what you're getting for it. And is it actually that much of a better finish that people are going to have something to say about it? Probably not, you know? Um, but yeah, those are some of the differences from flips and by the lets. So James, if we go to the bath, oh God. The immersion tank where you just flick the button. Oh yeah, there's no radiator. And, and it heats up the water, yeah. So what are you putting in then? I'm putting in a full combi system, so a nice Valiant uh, Ecotec 4's going in. Again, I could get away with the main, but I'm gonna spend that little bit extra because I hope it will appeal to someone with a 10 year manufacturer's guarantee rather than a five. Um, the old tank is coming out. I've asked the 
uh, the plumbing and the gas guys when they start, everything needs to be stripped back. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a whole brand new system, even to the point where they're replacing the lead pipe up until the outside of the property. Wow. Now, something people forget is when we tile that kitchen floor, you've got a lead pipe underneath it. Now, that lead pipe could be, you know, since 1930, since 1920s no, it when it was be, put yeah, in. Yeah. And the thing is, those lead pipes, as good as they are, all it takes is a slight leak underneath the tiled floor. I've had it before with yeah, water. When you need to take all the tiled floor out. So to overcome that factor, we're putting the blue pipe in through the house out to the road. So if there ever was a leak, there'll be a leak outside the house, not inside the house. But yeah, whole mm. brand new system, completely overhauled. I like this, the pipe straight into the... <laughs> well, if they need a clean while they're here, I mean, they can have one. More cracks, but again, you know, people get scared of cracks. Yeah, um, I don't. But I don't think you notice them, but I think... <laughs> I have noticed them. <laughs> but it's one of these things when you know what you're looking for, yeah. and you know what's bad and what's not, and to actually analyse it, which we're going to go through on the flip course, then, you know, you, you're okay with it, and you buy it, you don't care, you know? Like, it, it's part of... It is a red flag, mm. but... You know, you kind of need it in combination with other things to really not buy it. So, everyone, thanks so much for joining us on this tour. If you want to learn more about flips, about this particular property, how we're making money, you know, how he's managing the trades, how we're dealing with everything. I, mean, I can see some things in there to talk yeah, about already. a lot of things going on. Join us on the 6th and 7th of November uh, on the flip weekend in London, which is not too far from here. It's about, about four miles. About four miles from here. Um, James, quick figures on this deal. Purchase for how much? Uh, purchase for 418. Refurb? About 55,000. Uh, end value? Uh, we are looking anywhere up to about 570,000 pounds. But the fact that that one opposite sold for 518, I think you said? No, 533. <laughs> and that's in this condition. It leads, me to, sorry, it leads me to believe that there's going to be mad competition. And I spoke to the agent again yesterday, and he was even saying to me, look, James, I don't even think you need to go to the extent of doing this, this, and this. He goes, you could even leave the driveway, he goes, because there is such a shortage, people want houses. And in this so, market, you know, you've seen with the flip, pro the flip profit from my deal and the flip profit on here, which is about 60, 65? Around that. Kind of yeah. probably worst case in this market. That which is, is good for a London flip, man. I How mean, you pull that out of a London to, deal? Close to your house. Yeah. It's fairly straightforward. You're not yeah. doing crazy, crazy. I mean, extension's fine. It's a pretty big thing if you're new. But, you know, you're not doing something crazy and you're making almost six figures and it's down the road. Yeah. Like, that's pretty convenient, right? And you've bought this in a market where deals are incredibly hard to come by, yeah. overpriced, everyone's overpaying, but you've still secured a deal. And this is the kind of thing we talk about on the And you know weekend. what? I took a gamble with this one. I, According to my figures, this is about £19,000 over what I should have paid for it. But then I did some homework when I spoke to the agent and when he confirmed to me that there's such a stock shortage and he said to me, drive around, have a look at all our boards. It will say sold, 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 sold. Yeah. There is no stock. He goes, this time of year, we have 80 properties. We have eight. He goes, that's the difference. That's huge. So I thought to myself, do you know what? I'll pay that little bit extra. And it's not that I emotionally got you know, caught up in the whole bidding thing. I just thought to myself, look, it's the, the market has changed. I'm going to have to pay a little bit extra to get into a deal. And you know, hopefully, it works out for me on the other side. And, and that's something, again, is really important. Sometimes you can overpay mm -hmm. because of the market you're in, because you can cost engineer on the refurb because you have a business to run. So there's also different things we're going to talk about, you know, because I got my nine grand under, but I have significant reasons why I did mm. that don't exist on this deal, but yeah. exist on mine and scare most people, you know. Um, and these are the kind of things we're going to talk about. So if you're interested, click the link below, send us both, um, both a message and make sure you follow us both on Instagram and hit subscribe.